Hi, in this video we're going to take a look at how we can fade out and destroy a game object over a set period of time. So in my scene I've got five blood splatter effects that we're going to fade out over a certain period of time and either destroy them or disable them. So we need to create a new C sharp script. So create and we call this fade and destroy. And when that's compiled, we'll open it up in Visual Studio and start doing some code. Okay, doke, so the first we're going to do is set our initial variables up. So if we open up our variables uh, region here, and we paste these variables in and we'll take a quick look at them. We've got a float for the delay that we want to fade out. We've got a float for the alpha value, what we want to fade the object to. And then we've got a bool whether or not we want to actually destroy the object or not. If Because if you're going to fade it out uh, to say 0.25 on the alpha value, you might not want to destroy it. We've also got a reference to the sprite renderer, which will be the sprite renderer attached to this script. So if we jump now into the Unity methods and we'll go to the start method. And we need to have uh, a reference to our sprite renderer. So we've got one here and we're going to get the component. And then we're going to have a start coroutine, which I've called fade2. It's going to take the alpha value from this float here. And then the fade delay. So if we open up our user methods, we'll get ready and we'll uh, create the coroutine. Okay, this is a coroutine that we're going to need, so if we paste it in and we'll take a look. I've got this error because we need to include the correct namespace. So if I do that, click using system collections, that should go. Okay, so what we've got here is a simple coroutine. We're taking a float for the alpha value, which will be this alpha value that we've set here, and then a float for our fade delay. Okay, we create another float here, which I've called alpha, and we need to get the sprite renderer color A that actually represents the alpha value. Now we've got a for loop with another float that I've called T, which we set to zero, and then we're going to check. Uh, as we do normally in a standard for loop if t is less than one we go through the loop and then what we're going to do is add time delta time divide that by our fade time so in the for loop we want to create a new color and these values sprite render a color r g and b represent the rgb values of the sprite then we want to lerp between the alpha which is this float here to the alpha value that we want to set our uh, sprite to and then t which will be the time period we we'll then set the sprite renderer color to the new color and whilst this loop is going on we're just going to return null once this loop is finished we're going to destroy the game object if we want to destroy the game object okay so if we now save that jump back into unity and start attaching this script to some of the game objects so we've got one two three four and five okay i'm going to destroy that one and we'll destroy it over five seconds and we we'll set the alpha value to zero this one we'll leave at 10 seconds but we'll give it an alpha value of two five and we won't destroy it Again, we we'll destroy this one over, say, 15 seconds. 
we'll destroy this one over five seconds and we'll destroy this one I don't know over 20 seconds so with those all set up if we now click play we should notice the alpha values change four of these will get destroyed in the hierarchy and one will stay at a alpha value of 0 0.25 so we click play and let's run and see what happens as you can see they're slowly fading out at the moment to have been destroyed there goes the fourth there goes the fifth and the final one which we didn't set to destroy is still there but with a faded alpha value so if we stop this now jump back into Visual Studio now I would recommend if you're using a lot of things like blood splatters that uh, we just set it to inactive and use an object pool so if we just change this to game object set active false save this jump back into unity when it actually lets me click play again this time you'll notice up here everything will just get disabled as they get destroyed as you can see they're now disabling obviously if you're going to use a lot of splatter effects it makes sense you use an object pool and the one we haven't set to destroy is still set alive ok so back into Visual Studio again now I've got these set as public really they want to be private and uh, you should just set your values here for your game objects if you want to destroy it or not but I've set them public just for the purpose of this video that's going to be it for this video hope you enjoyed it please hit like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video